Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to speak today about the Indus script, an ancient writing system that has defied decipherment. The Indus script belongs to a culture that flourished along the banks of Indus River around 4,000 years ago. The culture itself was unique, and it was unique for a variety of reasons. The people who actually created this great culture were not only masters on in a, on a grand scale, an instance of which is seen in the sophisticated architecture, water harvesting systems, town planning, etc., they were equally careful in the works of art that are generally depicted on these kind of objects. These are the objects that are referred to as Indus seals. And what is special about these objects is that in most of the cases, the size of the Indus seal doesn't go beyond a few square centimeters in size. The maximum uh, size of an Indus seal is about 5 centimeters square. Now, there is something more to that. Uh, it is these seals that give us uh, some kind of evidence about writing of this great culture that still remains an enigmatic puzzle. Yeah. So the Indus Valley civilization was one of the four major civilizations of the old world. It covered an area of about a million square kilometer, that is roughly the whole of current day Pakistan, uh, northwestern parts of India, as well as some parts of Afghanistan. Uh, what about the writing systems? We know that the Chinese script continues even today, so there was never a question of decipherment, but both e Egyptian hieroglyphs, uh, that is their ancient writing system, as well as Meso Mesopotamian cuneiform text that had once become obsolete because people no longer used them, could later be deciphered with the help of bilingual inscriptions. We are not been that lucky in the case of Indus Valley civilization, and hence this writing that generally appears on these kind of small, tiny objects continues to challenge scholars all over the world. So most of the written material uh, that we find from various regions come uh, on these kind of uh, seals and ceilings that are uh, roughly of uh, square or rectangular shape. We do find ev evidence of writing on several other uh, objects such that include uh, these kind of copper tablets, sorry, uh, even on pottery shreds, uh, these kind of miniature uh, tablets that again do not go uh, beyond few centimeters in size and even at times on jewelry pieces, bangles and so on. The presence of indescript signs on these various kinds of objects does indicate that the script was quite versatile and may have encoded a variety of messages. Now if we take a closer look at one of uh, this uh, square seal of the uh, Indus Valley civilization, we realize that we can see three main components on this Indus seal. There are a bunch of symbols at the top part, and this is what comprises an Indus text. We also see two other components. Uh, here, a single horned animal, which most often, uh, which is the most often depicted animal on an Indus seal. And uh, there are several uh, theories floating around about the nature of this uh, animal. Also, some people believe that this it is an mythical animal. People have also been claiming that, no, this is a side view of an animal, so the next other horn is not uh, visible. It is just besides that. But there is no consensus on this aspect of the animal. Then we also have uh, a characteristic object near its face, and it also remains equally e enigmatic. But we are today going to discuss about one aspect of this seal, that is, what did they write? I wish I knew the answer to this question, but of course we start with what we know about the Indus script. The sign list of Indus script consists of about 400 signs that look like human stick figures, fish, etc. Uh, this is how some of the signs of Indus script looked like, and here we can see that sign number each sign in the sign list is, is referred to by a number. So we can see sign number 1 to sign, one, sign number 110 uh, on this slide. And four such slides actually uh, exhaust the complete sign list of the Indus script. Now, what is interesting to note over here is that we can see a series of signs uh, that look like uh, human stick figures. Then we have another series of signs that uh, resemble several animals, including fish, crab, birds, etc. And then we have a series of signs that look like uh, strokes, but we do not know whether they actually serve the purpose of numbers or they had some other purpose in the script. We also find signs resembling triangles, uh, arcs, etc. in the uh, sign list, but uh, let us just leave it at that. But I would like to point out one interesting aspect of uh, the total count of uh, the signs in the uh, in any kind of script. Now, even though if we do not know anything about a uh, script, we can say something about its nature depending on the count 
of the total number of signs that are present in the sign list of the, that script. We know that in case of alphabetic systems, the total count of signs doesn't go beyond 40 in most of the cases. The English alphabet, for example, has just 26 letters. On the other hand, Chinese uh, writing system has thousands of signs and here each sign stands for a word. With about 400 signs in the sign list, Indus seems to fall in this category of logosyllabic writing system. Here, each sign serves two purposes. It may be used for what it looks like and it can, can also be used for what it sounds like. To give you an example, suppose I want to write the word belief in logosyllabic writing system. What I'll do is I'll just put, put a picture of B and a picture of leaf si side by side and that will do the job for me. Now here, each of these two uh, signs have been used for what they sound like. Most of the ancient writing systems employed these kind of techniques to economize the use of uh, a limited number of signs in their sign system and in this script may have been no exception. Okay, now, now let us move to the another interesting aspect of, his, uh, of the script that is its direction. This is uh, one of the only uh, aspect over which there is some consensus in the field and it is believed to be right to left. Now, there are several uh, indicators that led scholars all over the world to come to this conclusion I, and I would like to enumerate a few of them. What happens is at times we find cramping of signs to as, uh, as we go towards the left end of the object. So, the writing uh, starts normally and as we move towards the left hand side, we find that the signs sh start shrinking. We also find at times the that the uh, signs uh, start normally and due to the lack of space, the last sign just overflows to the next sign, next line. Then we find examples of this kind of clockwise writing uh, where we find a, a gap towards the right hand side and all these things indicate right to left direction, but of course there are certain exceptions to this uh, direction too. Uh, okay. Even though the first seal uh, was discovered uh, in around, uh, around uh, in 1873, uh, the problem of Indus script has not yet solved. Now, what makes the problem so challenging? Uh, first and foremost, most of the texts that we find on Indus seals are very short and brief. The average number of signs on Indus uh, seal is, uh, or in, an, in any Indus text is just 5. The longest single line text consists of just 14 signs and the longest text that again runs in three distinct lines consists of 26 signs. Secondly, we do not know what language Harappan people used to speak. So that makes the problem more difficult. And finally, we do not have any kind of bilingual inscription. For example, we do not have an Indus Rosetta stone that can do the, uh, that can serve as a key to the decipherment. Now, in spite of these hurdles, scholars have been trying to make sense of the Indus writing over several decades and they have been trying to read the Indus script with no clear answers. There have been suggestions that the script encodes uh, uh, a proto-Dravidian language. People have even tried to relate it to Indo-Aryan language and they have tried to read Vedic literature. They have also, uh, there were also claims that uh, the uh, script is entirely numeric. People have tried to relate it to the earliest uh, Indian script, that is Brahmi script. But the bottom line is, the science system of Indus culture remains ambiguous with contested claims of decipherment, but no consensus on any of them. So, we decided to start afresh. We thought that, okay, let us first try to write in the script rather than read it. In a, and in order to write, one should know the rules of writing. So, we decided to look at the data from scratch without any kind of uh, assumptions about the content of the writing. And what we do is we start with the sign frequencies. If we take a look at the sign frequency distribution of Indus signs, we realize that just 67 signs out of 417 signs in the sign list account for about 80 percent of the writing. And within these, uh, amongst these 67 signs, just this one sign that looks like a U sign over here accounts for about 10 percent of the complete corpus. If we take a look at the text enders and text beginners, we find that uh, there, there seems to be certain uh, set of signs that most often seem to start an index text and we have certain set of signs which most often end an index text. So, this diamond most often starts uh, an index text and this jar kind of figure a sign seems to most often end an index text. But we were more bothered about the, sequen uh, the sequences that is 
we, the qu first question which we wanted to answer was, are index texts just a collection of randomly ordered signs or is there, an, is there any significant sequencing? So we performed an experiment and what we did was we just shuffled all the signs in the uh, written text and checked how often we get similar sequences by chance and in real index data. What comes out of this analysis is, uh, is interesting. We find that there exist sign sequences uh, of size 2, 3 and 4 signs uh, that appear in the index data set far more frequently that can than what could arise by chance. That is the index data set consists of pairs, triplets and quadruplets that make their appearance in the entire corpus far more often than wha what can arise by random coincidence. Now the immediate question was, okay, if the data set had this kind of sequences, how are they distributed in the index text? So that brought us to the second uh, phase of the analysis where we perform positional distribution of these sign sequences. Suppose we take into consideration how the most frequent pair is uh, distributed in the several index texts, we find that this diamond followed by the two, this two stroke sign, which is the most frequent pair in the entire index data set, most often seems to start an index text. Similarly, another pair, this pair most often has a preferred location at the central part of, the in, of any index text. Then the, this third pair seems to have a preferred location at the ending portion of the index text. So each of the most frequent pairs uh, seem to have a favorite location in the index text. This is true not only for pairs, but also for triplets and quadruplets. So this was certainly uh, very interesting. Uh, and by the end of this thing, we uh, were pretty sure that, okay, there are uh, certain co uh, significant correlation between signs in the uh, text of uh, index. And we wanted to uh, use current day machine learning techniques in order to restore some of the damaged uh, index text that is that those are those which were coming from broken index seals or uh, from uh, seals that were uh, damaged over a period of time. So what we do is we create a model of index script. Now research in the uh, current day machine learning techniques and data mining techniques have uh, led to several new uh, tools for pattern recognition, pattern completion, even for grammar discovery. And all these are based on, uh, on uh, certain st statistical models that are not, that are rather indifferent to what the sequences are made up of. They are more, uh, uh, I mean, they, they, those are so generic that they, they can be used to analyze sequences of any kind. We can use certain set of techniques to analyze uh, protein sequences that are made up of amino acids. We can use the same set of techniques to use uh, to uh, analyze the DNA sequences that those which are made up of ATGC base pairs. We can use them to analyze uh, the letter usage in uh, sing strings of letters in a word. We can use them to analyze strings of words in a sentence and so on. So we decided to use the same set of techniques on index sequences. And let us first of all, uh, take a look at what kind of insights which we, we can get if we try to create such a model for uh, letter usage in English words. The model can capture these kind of uh, patterns. That is, in a word, if we take each letter as an independent token, we find that the letter T can be succeeded by a lot of letters such as A, E, O, but not X or Z. Similarly, we, find, uh, we know that the letter Q is usually succeeded by U and so on. Uh, if we create a, such a model for uh, the word usage in, a, in, in an English sentence, we'll find that the word the can be f followed by a large number of words, but not verbs such as eat. So we wanted to ca capture these kind of uh, uh, syntactic correlations for index sign sequences. And uh, first of all, before going into the uh, index script model, I would like to show Uh, so, if I uh, show how uh, the model will be, uh, how, how, how can we define such a model for uh, uh, letter usage uh, in English words? So, in, in case of English words, my model will be having these two main parameters, that is A, the number of states, 
which in case of English alphabet is just 26 and I'll also have a transition matrix uh, that will define with what probability each of these letter can be followed or preceded by another letter. So we have uh, a transition matrix of size 26 by 26 over here and each of these element in the matrix defines the, uh, give the gives us the probability of occurrence of each uh, letter uh, followed or preceded by any other letter. So if we just ma uh, uh, extrapolate the, the method for index uh, text what we can do is we can just map this index text to this kind of sequence of states and uh, my model for English text uh, for index text will have a state space that is that will be uh, slightly larger instead of having 26 letters I will have 417 uh, states in case of uh, index and my transition matrix will be huge that is instead of 26 by 26 uh, uh, a size uh, transition matrix I will have a 417 by 417 by 17 uh, sign, uh, uh, size transition matrix and this will uh, actually can be this model now can be used for uh, several in interesting applications now I can use this model for filling in damaged or illegible index text now there are there are certain indices that are bro that were broken and we can use this model now to restore the damaged portion of the index text. We can also use this uh, model to generate index like text and finally I can use the same model to analyze variation in writing of coming from different regions or from different objects. Okay, uh, So all this shows that index writing was clearly ordered and seems to be dictated by certain set of rules. Uh, these results also seem to suggest an underlying grammar but does the script encode language? Uh, this brings me to the last and uh, uh, segment of my talk and I would like to present here uh, a small piece of analysis that we performed on the index data. What we do is we try to compare uh, one aspect of uh, index script with several linguistic and non-linguistic uh, systems and what we actually compare is the conditional entropy of index science system with several other linguistic and non-linguistic systems. Now what is conditional entropy? Conditional entropy is a um, uh, mathematical measure that quantifies the amount of flexibility in choosing a sign given given a preceding sign. Now given a sign A, how, with, uh, how many signs can follow that particular sign? So it actually uh, quantifies that uh, flexibility in choosing a sign given any preceding sign and what comes out of this, this analysis is that the uh, conditional entropy or flexibility in sign usage in, in the system seems to be relatively close to linguistic systems rather than non-linguistic systems. Now, uh, to give you an idea about the various uh, linguistic and uh, uh, non-linguistic system that we uh, included in the study, we had Indus of course, then we used uh, English uh, brown corpus data, we had Sanskrit uh, language uh, data from Rigveda, that is Rigveda text, we also had old Tamil data, we had Sumeria, Sumerian uh, data set for uh, logosyllabic writing system, we had two non-linguistic systems that is DNA and protein and we also had Fortran that is a programming language. We had two other control uh, data sets, one in which there was ext that there is extreme amount of flexibility that is any sign can follow any other sign and one in which ex there is extreme amount of rigidity that is only one can one sign can be followed by uh, only one uh, sign can follow a particular sign. So on the y axis we have the conditional entropy on the x axis we have a number of tokens. Now what is interesting to note over here is that Fortran seems to fall somewhere in between. That is the flexibility in sign usage in case of uh, or token usage in case of Fortran seems to fall between an extremely rigid system and the band that is mostly covered by the linguistic systems. DNA and protein come somewhere over here but Indus seems to sit very well in the band that is mostly taken up by most of the linguistic systems. All right, so let me just uh, try to summarize what all things we have seen today. The index script, uh, uh, as we know, it is found on a variety of objects at several sites spanning over a million square kilometer for 700 years. Why I say 700 years is because the uh, script makes into comes into picture with the, uh, with the mature phase that is around 2600 BC, and it goes out of the scene uh, do, uh, with the decline of the civilization that is around 1900 BC. The sequencing of signs is important in the in index text. The script seems to have a rich syntax with an underlying logic in its structure and finally I would like to end with this statement that we can't read in the script but we think we can write it with some degree of confidence. Thank you very much.